Hello and welcome back to the channel for another video on maths multiplication preparing for the year six SATS arithmetic test. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the multiplication questions that are likely to come up on the paper for 2023. Um, the questions I'm going to go through today are from the 2022 paper and I'm going to look at all the multiplication types of questions and how we teach the children to solve them in school. The first question we're going to look at is question number two from the paper, and it's the first multiplication question that comes up. It's not a tricky question, but um, it's a question that children could slip up on if they don't know uh, the rules around this type of question. So zero multiplied by 989. Now, this symbol here, um, as I say to the children, it just means groups of. So what we're looking at here is zero groups of 989. Now, if you have zero groups of anything, then the answer is going to be zero. So when you multiply any number by zero, the answer is always zero. Make sure the children write the answer in the box provided, otherwise they may not get the answer correct. Very easy question, but I just wanted to cover it anyway. So the next type of question is slightly different. Um, it's not a question we're gonna use our multiplication uh, written method for. Um, we're gonna use a place of value chart to solve this. So. A lot of children say that they can do these questions in their head, but I encourage all the children in my class to make sure that they draw a place value grid when solving this type of question, just to make sure the numbers are all in the right places. Now, when you're multiplying by 10, 100 or 1000, uh, the numbers I teach the children are always going to move to the left. Um, and if we're multiplying by 10, then they're always going to move to the left by one jump. Now, what that means is, in the in the test, I would encourage the children to quickly draw a place value chart, which doesn't have to be neat or neat or tidy. OK, but I'm literally just going to draw it really quickly down the bottom here and I'm going to put in the numbers. So we've got thousands. So I'm going to write thousands here. And we've got hundreds and we've got tens and we've got ones. Once again, it doesn't have to be neat, it just has to show where the numbers are so the num the, they can make the numbers jump. So then I put the number in, 1,000 um, and zero in the hundreds columns and 10. Now, like I said before, if we're multiplying by 10, the numbers are gonna make one jump to the left, okay? I need to just add there, we've got the tens of thousands column as well, because that's where we're gonna be headed. So the, the one is going to move into the tens of thousands. The zero is going to move into the thousands. It's going to do one jump to the thousands. The, ten, the, the, the tens column is going to do one jump into the hundreds column. And the ones um, column is going to do one jump into the tens column. So I'm going to put the zero there. Now we have a gap here in this column here. So if you ever have that happen, you just put a zero to place hold in that gap. Giving us a final answer then, if we look at this number of 10,100, okay? And when writing it, make sure they write their final answer in the box provided. 10,000 and that comma there and 100. So the answer to this question, the final answer is 10,100. Okay, moving on to the next question. So the next question we're going to look at is question number 12 from the paper. And this is a different type of question because it's asking to multiply three numbers together. Interestingly, I believe that this type of question is first taught in year three or year four curriculum, but this is a key stage two test. So even though it's done in year six, it's um, assessing the children's ability on the knowledge they've gained over the whole of key stage two, right from year three to six. So this question is not tricky, but there is a quick and more efficient way of doing it. For example, if you were to do it in order, you did six times 10, which is 60, and then did 60 times 11, that's quite tricky to do in your head. Um, for some people, maybe not so, but there is an easier way to do it. So I would do, and I would say this to the children, which numbers are, is it easy to multiply together? Okay, so six times 11, fairly easy, is gonna be 66. Okay, so we've done that bit. And then I'm going to say to them, well, now we have to multiply by the other number. So I'm going to do 66 times 10. Now, the reason that's easier is because 66 times 10, the answer is going to be six, uh, 10 times bigger. 
We can either add a zero or you can draw your place value chart to move the numbers forward. But also the children should be able to do 66 times 10 in their head. Okay, which is going to give us a final answer of 660. But again, it's with these types of questions, um, it's just the order in which you do it. Okay, yeah, you could do this question six times 10 times 11. But if you ask me, it's much easier to do six times 11 first and then multiply that by 10. So it's just having that discussion with the children and having um, a talk about which they think would be the most efficient and quickest method to get this one correct. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Now, the next question is um, a three digit number multiplied by a one digit number. But where the children might be tripped up with this type of question is that they've placed the equal sign in the middle here. OK, and this can throw children off slightly sometimes. But what I say to the children is whenever you get a question like this and the equal sign is not at the end, all the equal sign means is it's like a balancing scale. So whatever is on this side has to equal on this side so the scale can balance. OK, that's what the equal sign means. It just means whatever's here is equal to here. So in this instance, you just have to do this sum here and write the answer there. OK, so to, in order to do it, I would then say to them, right, well, let's use our sharp multiplication. So positioning the numbers like so. OK, then we do six times seven, which is 42, two down, carry the four. Then we're going to do nine sevens to 63 <clears throat> plus four is 67, seven down carry the six, five sevens at 35 <clears throat> plus six is going to be 41. Leaving us with a final answer of 4,172. And you might notice the box is no longer down here. So in this question, they have to write the answer in this box provided 4,000, put the comma in, 172. OK, so that's that question. Let's move on to the next one. So the next question is our first of the long multiplication questions. The reason it's called long multiplication is because one, it takes a long time, um, but also because you're normally multiplying a three or four digit number by a two digit number. So there's going to be more than one step in this process. And because it's um, there's more than one step, involved um, the children have to show they're working because the the question is worth two marks which means that even if they get their answer incorrect they can still be given a mark for their working out so they're also given the number provided so it's written out for them but it doesn't mean to say that they can't write it out themselves uh, next to it or use the space provided which is what i'm going to do okay so a couple of things to remember when multiplying using long multiplication is there's a couple of places where the children can trip up. Okay. Firstly, place the numbers in the right places. Secondly, we always multiply the ones first. So that's what I'm going to do. Seven threes are 21, one down, carry the two. Two, uh, zero times three is zero plus two is what two. Six threes are 18. Right. So that's the first bit done. But now this is the really important part that children sometimes forget. We're now going to multiply by the tens this eight here. So if we're doing that, we need to zero in this ones column as a placeholder because we're not multiplying by ones, we're multiplying by tens. So we need to we need to take that into account. And you always put a zero here to placehold before you multiply by the ten. So that's the real key thing to remember when looking at this type of question with your child. Seven eights are 56, six down, carry the five. OK, zero times eight is zero, but then we've got the five here. So we write down the five there and six eights are 48. We write both of those numbers down. And then the final step for long multiplication is the addition. So once you've got both of these numbers, we just add down. So one add zero is one. Two and six is eight. Five and eight is 13. Three down, carry the one. One and eight is nine and one is ten. Zero down, carry the one. And one and that one, a four, and the one that's been carried is five. Giving us a final answer of 50,381. 50, okay. And once again, 
Um, I know I've kind of gone into the box here, but they must write their answer in the box provided in order to get the question correct. Okay. And let's say I did get the answer wrong at the end. I might still have got a mark for this working out. So with these two mark questions, just a reminder to show you're working. Okay, now a different type of question. Um, still multiplication, but this time we're multiplying by 1,000. Now, like I said before, when multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000, the children need to know that the numbers are going to get bigger or greater. So we're moving the numbers to the left on our place value chart. And when multiplying by 1,000, we are going to make the numbers do three jumps this time. So I'm going to need quite a large place value chart. But like I said to you before, these are questions which the children can easily slip up on. And just drawing out the place value chart quickly can really make sure they've put the numbers in the correct places. So this is a decimal number this time also. So we also have to take that into account. So I'm going to need to have uh, ones. I'm going to need to have tenths as decimals. I'm going to need to have hundredths. That's not hundreds. That's hundredths and thousandths. These are my decimal places. And then I've got obviously tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands. Okay, it doesn't have to be neat or tidy, it just has to be clear for them so they can see where the numbers are moving. Now, let's now put the number in. So 13 is going to be 1, 10, 3 ones, decimal point, and then we're going to have 0 and 5. Now, like I said to you before, we teach the children that the numbers when multiplying by 1,000 make 3 jumps. So the 1 is going to do 1, 2, 3 jumps and end up in the tens of thousands column. The three is going to do three jumps, one, two, three, and end up in the thousands column. We also need to move the zero. So the zero is going to move three jumps and end up in the hundreds column. The five is going to do three jumps, one, two, three, and end up in the tens column. And now we've got a space here. So we're going to fill that with a placeholder zero. And with this, you don't need to worry about the decimal places once you've got your whole number. Isn't, you don't need to write dot uh, point zero zero. Okay, you just need to leave those blank, which gives us a final answer of 13,050. Okay, so once again, let's make sure we write the final answer in the box provided. 13,000 comma zero five zero. 13,050 is the answer to question 20. And that's how we would teach the children to solve it. Okay, moving on to the next question. The next and final question I think of this video is the long multiplication question again. This time, these are kind of the trickiest multiplication questions on the arithmetic paper. It involves a four digit number multiplied by a two digit number. Okay, so once again, there's going to be a couple of steps to do here. It's asking us to show our working because there are two marks available and we can get a mark for just showing our working out. So once again, let's just position the numbers in the right places. OK, and we're going to start by multiplying the ones first. So eight times seven is 56. When so write the six down and carry the five. Seven sevens are 49. Add five is going to be 54. Four down, carry the five again. And then we're going to do zero times seven, which is zero. But we've got the five here, which we've carried. So we're going to write that down. And then four, se four times seven is 28. So that's the first bit done, but now we're looking at multiplying the tens. And just like I said in the other question, we need to remember to have a zero to be a placeholder because we're multiplying by tens and not by ones. So eight times six is 48. Eight down, carry the four. So you can write your four there or write it underneath, completely up to you. Um, 
I probably wouldn't write it underneath because you're going to use this space for your addition in a minute. Um, and then we're going to do seven sixes of 42. Carry the four, um, add the four as well. So 42 add four is 46. So we're going to six down, carry the four again. And then we're going to do zero times six, which is zero. But then we've got the four. And then finally, four sixes are 24, and we write both of those numbers down. Okay, so the last step involved um, is to do the addition. So six adds zero is six. Four and eight is 12. Two down, carry the one. Five and six is 11, and one is 12. Again, two down, carry the one. Eight and four is 12, plus one is 13. So it's three down, carry the one. 2 and 4 make 6, and that one is 7. And then we've got 2 add 0, which is obviously going to be 2, giving us a final answer of um, 273,226. And once again, you would ask the children to make sure you write your final answer in the box provided. Okay, so just with these types of questions, show you working, then if your answer is wrong, you might still get at least one mark. Make sure you have your zero as your placeholder. That's really important when multiplying um, by these two digit numbers. And just be careful when you're adding, make sure your numbers are placed in the right places so you're not adding the wrong numbers together. And if you've done all of those things, you should come up with the right answer and you get two marks for the right answer. Okay. That is the final question I'm going to be showing you as part of the multiplication video today. I've gone through all the different types of multiplication questions that came up on the 2022 paper and how we would teach the children in school to solve them. Hope you found the video useful. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos on primary education and um, look out for the next video, which is going to be about all the questions to do with division on the arithmetic paper. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.